think we are ready for the next presentation. So please give a round of applause for Kim. I'm going to do a presentation today about what it will be, or Casino War, or whatever you want to call it. It's up to you. Um, and like I said in the, on the slide, um, I did part of it on a train here, and if you've ever done like Google Slides on your phone, it's a little rough. But I did it, and it's okay. So if there's any typos or whatever, just ignore them. Um, I have it a little structured, so I'm going to start, uh, start off with who I am. Just very short, not very long at all. Uh, then a little bit of the prologue of what will be what happened before it, why did it start, and how did it like hap happen or end up happening. Then I'm going to go very shortly over the three key, my opinion, the three key battles of um, what will be. Um, obviously there were way more, but um, I think three of them kind of decided the war. And then a uh, the little bit on the grind of decline and the Saradin camp, I mean, or whatever it was, was low sec. And then a little bit of the aftermath, so yeah, we'll, we'll figure that out. Um, and then obviously questions afterwards. So who am I? I'm Killer B. I'm Fleet Commander in Pandemic Legion, and I um, started playing when I was 12, which is uh, nine years ago, so quite a long time. Uh, I started as Sieg in 2014. I was in Noli Seconda back then, and um, yeah, I really got my, my major experience fighting Stainwagon in, um, in the South. It was pretty some pretty good fight, so it was a lot of fun. And then when PL got contracted by Goons to kill Noli, um, because we were beating up their Stainwagon friends too hard, um, I got poached the way that PL does it. You know, they, they killed Noli, and then I, they came to me like, hey, don't you want to FC in PL because Noli is dead? And then I said yes. Um, some people hate me for that, but that's just you know, the way I do it. And then, um, yeah, so I was Lenny's military mind in World War V, and I did the, most of the campaign commanding for the NBC, so I kind of organized all the alliances and all the fleets and stuff like that. Uh, I also ran the fleets myself, but uh, there was like, the majority, like, during World War V, during the hot phase, there was like, probably like 10 hours a day of just typing on Discord and other stuff, and it was really a lot of paper pushing, which sucks. Um, so yeah, let's get to the, to the prologue. Um, they never tell you how to hold a microphone. Um, in November 2015, um, the CFC was controlling uh, basically the entire north. I call you CFC. I know you call yourself Imperium, but I don't. Um, <laughs> so yeah, the CFC was controlling the north, and uh, they seemed unbeatable. Nobody ever really wanted to invade them because we're like, oh, we can't do anything about them. They have a huge super cap fleet. Basically, since B Tech R, uh, the CFC seemed invulnerable and nobody ever tried anything. Um, but something happened in late 2015. There was lots of projects that um, you guys attempted, the CFC attempted, that kind of didn't go as expected. Uh, obviously, the book Kickstarter kind of failed because of Reddit. It was pretty dumb in my opinion, but uh, it failed. Um, then the whole evic eviction of war campaign didn't work out, I guess, and then also you started like kind of an invasion of Losek, or you tried to pur purge, or you did purge most of the Losek moons, uh, and so a lot of Losek people are really angry, and uh, Hoy was really angry, Reddit was really angry, so there was a lot of really angry people that really wanted to uh, beat you guys up, but obviously there was no one that actually did it, because everybody was scared. And then some incident happened, which I actually don't know that much about, so uh, I can't really talk about too much about it, but apparently some SAMA, I know back then, most uh, higher ups and I won this were in SMA, and there was some drama uh, between the bankers. Uh, somebody stole money or whatever, and then um, I won this hired Tissue and Mercenary Coalition, I think, to fuck SMA up a bit. Oh, sorry, wording. Um, and yeah, so that happened. And then um, Lenny, the guy who uh, started doing all of that, he kind of started realizing that. There's a lot of people that really want to beat these guys up, so I might as well try it on a bigger scale, not only on SMA. So he wanted to do it with the CFC. And uh, he approached us in December 2015 for the first time, and it was a really um, really weird conversation, because he basically convoed Elise, and then Elise invited me to the convo. And I was like, so what do you want? Like, what, like I, didn't know, I didn't know him at all. Um, he's like, yeah, I want you to kill goons. And I'm like, 
Alright? <laughs> cool. <laughs> like, that was dumb. Like, I was like, this guy is fucking retarded. Right? So I just, um... But then, then he came up with the offer, and he said, I'm gonna give you 2.5 trillion yes for it. And then made us think, but we still declined it, the offer, because um, we, we, we talked about it in the PL leadership. The way PL works is, um, when we get a contract offer, they basically post it to all the FCs, we have FC forum section, and then the FCs get to decide, and then usually we, somebody needs to take the charge of the campaign or the contract, and then if they do that, we do it. And nobody really wanted to do that, obviously Manny wanted, but nobody uh, took Manny serious, because Manny's inactive. And we were like, yeah, yeah, Manny. Uh, no, we're not doing it, so we, we declined the offer, even though it was a lot of risk. But uh, it, it kind of got me interested in the whole like idea. And I kept talking to Lenny, and it felt like talking to a crazy person was kind of funny. Um, so I stayed in contact, with, in contact with him and kind of helped him to make it real, because like I said, he just, he just, oh, I just want to kill goons, like casually, just do it. And obviously it didn't work out, so I gave him advice how we could maybe do it. And um, then I started doing, we were living back in Kurs, uh, down in Kurs back then. I started doing a lot of uh, wormhole ops up north uh, to help um, out of sight against um, Fcon and Razor. We had, had a couple of nice fights. And um, then in like early 2016, I actually talked to Vince uh, from NC Dot because he obviously got approached by Lenny as well, and we kind of worked it out. Uh, and then we actually decided. I, I posted it again because I was actually an active uh, FC instead of like unlike Manny. So then when I said, "Hey, I'm going to do this. Like I'm, I want this to happen now," uh, then we actually did it. So we moved. Um, yeah, more and more alliances joined the project. Uh, basically, you had a test who wanted to join, and you know, all the LOSIC guys were starting to hit the CO2 moons in, in the LOSIC area. Um, so yeah, then we, we moved, and we deployed PL to Akora, which is... Uh, oh, that's the wrong button. Oh, there you go. Uh, which is here, it's Akora, which um, goes to BWF, and from BWF, from Gemini, you can hit Vale of the Silent very nicely. We deployed uh, NC dot to Vale, which is somewhere around here. I don't know, somewhere in Placid. Uh, and we had NC help Horde um, in attacking Fade mainly, they focus on Fade and a little bit of pure light. And then we had um, Out of Sight and later the Drone Walkers who came in from, from here, like over there, through regions. Uh, and then they attacked um, Razor and Fcon and, and Tinal and Branch. So we basically had like a three front kind of thing going on. Um, and that worked, at the end it worked really well. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what we did. And uh, yeah, I said. Yeah, exactly. We, we opened up, we, uh, before we moved, before PL moved, it was only two fronts. We only had Branch and Tino, and we had the East with Fade and NC that weren't really successful at all. Um, and then we moved to, to the East, to Cora, and us, Tissue and Lumpy uh, started hitting Vale. The first stop was terrible. I lost like 15 dreads and an entire Napok fleet to Lawn and uh, the Russians. Because I somehow expected the Russians to be on my side, and then they just fucked me. Uh, it was great. <laughs> No, but it wasn't too bad. If Graf came and he's like, oh, killer, you just did the biggest will since BTEC R. I'm like, oh, well, that wasn't too bad. <laughs> Everyone had fun. I have, a, I have a little video of the move up. Let's see if this uh, works. I'm not going to play all of it either because it's pretty boring. Uh, the rest of it. Pretty depressing. Yeah. <laughs> I stole it from NC Dot. That was actually NC Dot's move up because we don't fraps our move ups. But uh, yeah, so props to NC. Pretty impressive ball of titans you have there. We also don't jump all our titans to one sign but they do it. So cool. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we would reset them someday. That'd be that'd be fun. Uh, so yeah, then uh, let's talk about some of the key battles of um, what would be, in my opinion, um, the first one, which is probably one of the most important ones is um, the Battle of 2DW. There was, back then, there was this, um, a system in Whale of the Silent that Lorne and Bastion were living in. Actually, they moved in, because um, the system had four or five CSAs in them, I can't actually remember, and we know at least one was building a Leviathan, so we hit that CSA twice, and twice we failed. The first time, we got blocked really bad, um, obviously, and we were too late. The second time, we were too late again, 
like we always formed too late and then didn't make it into system in time or whatever, so that was that was fucked up. Um, but then the third time we finally got it right. I, I shouted at everyone, "Hey, please form up early this time. And let's let's get in system first. And we did that, and we also outnumbered the. Uh, CFC by about 300 people, for almost 400 people, so obviously that's a big advantage. Uh, they still took the fight, which I think was amazing. Um, the Lawn FC worked in their fleet and split it in half. Like, this one half of the fleet was stuck at the pass, so we raped half the fleet. And then um, CO2 actually stayed and fought, even though I remember... Who was the... I actually don't know who was in charge, but I mean, I know that they've been told to bail, but Gigix, we all know him, love him. He doesn't like bailing, so he's decided to stay and fight, and he lost, and then he ordered his entire McCarroll fleet to self-destruct, because they were just dying, and it took a while because it was tied, so he's like, oh man, let's just not wait around, let's just self-destruct, so he self-destructed like 150 McCarroll something. <laughs> I, I was like, alright, cool, just hold on, hold on, guys, you know, so all the self-destruct notifications coming up on his screen, I was fucking, I was like, alright guys, whore and everything, and then we can get out, so it was kind of cool. So yeah, the CFC kind of lost that fight, um, mainly because they've been outnumbered and we managed to get into system early. But this was a huge thing, like a huge deal. Um, actually, I'm going to put up the next slide. This is the, the budget bill, what I call it. So yeah, you can see, um, we, the CFC had about 821 pilots here, and we had 1,140, which uh, is quite a bit more. Uh, this is just the battleships. Obviously, there was AHAX in the fight, so Proteus and stuff, but this is just the battleships. You can see it was 211 lost, mainly on the carriers. So there's a lot of battleships that died. Um, and it was, a, it was a huge deal, because first time in a very long time, the CFC was outnumbered, and people started realizing that even, like I had Graf and Jeff from PL, who both really didn't really believe in the campaign at all. They were like a, another attempt to attack the CFC. You know, we had like four fountain invasions and they all failed horribly. Uh, so they were like not very convinced. But after 2DW, I had Jeff actually could have probably put that in there and probably would have gotten purged for leaks. Um, he, had, he messaged me and he was like, hey, I think we can actually do it this time. Which is weird because Jeff is not very known for actually playing the game. Not more, not anymore. So yeah, it was fun. And uh, the same shit happened on Reddit. Uh, everybody started realizing, man, they got outnumbered, and this might actually be real this time. Also, apparently, people look up to us for that kind of stuff. Now they hate us again, it's very shifty. Um, so they were like, oh, PL is joining the war, this is real now, or whatever. So yeah, that, that was a big influence for the next, uh, next big battle, which was actually just five days later. It felt way longer, but it was um, MTECO, which was obviously a huge thing. Um, let me drink water. I so, um, yeah, I put these pictures on the right side because um, within those five days, um, after we won 2DW, Lawn and Bastion extracted from Vale of the Sidon was basically over, like they kind of gave up on the region. So I decided to move PL from Akora to um, Akonan because we wanted to start sieging Tribute. And uh, that happened way faster as well as I expected because obviously CO2 switched sides, I'll talk about that in uh, the next slide. Um, but yeah, it was a huge deal, so Reddit was hyping it up, the whole the test propaganda machine was going wild. It was like 30 fucking dinosaurs pictures on, on, on Reddit every single day. <laughs> Feel, feels just like now, except now it's always like the dead PL guys in the background, and there was bees back then, so it's like, eh, shifting. No, but so basically the test propaganda machine was riling people up on Reddit, and it was insane. Um, tested a lot, and there was actually random people, like people from HiSec, there was one guy, I remember it. He messaged me the day after Twitter, he's like, hey, I'm a high sec ice mine, I have a lot of Strond I can give you. I'm like, alright, cool, thank you, I'm, I'm sure we can buy Strond and Jita, but I appreciate, like, he wanted to be a part of the war, he wanted to help, so I took his Strond. And, uh, <laughs> I, I, I probably still have that. Um, there was a lot of Strond. No, so, um, we had like, random people convoying me as well, like, high sec guys, like, hey, I, wanna, I know we're just a little high sec corp of 20 dudes, but we really want to join you guys in the war against the goons, and, we really want to help or some, we don't want to participate. Uh, we even had wormholes that actually rolled their dreads and stuff out of the wormholes to join us. Like, why? Like, we, al we already outnumbered them by like 400 people. We don't need an even bigger blob. But then I didn't know what to do with all these people, so I talked to Jane from Spectre Fleet and I was like, hey, so I have all these random guys that want to join the war, but I can't take them in the PL fleet, so how about you? What do you think? Like, where, where, do, where do you stand in this whole thing? And he was like, yeah, sure, let's, let's kill goons or whatever. So, 
um, I, I just sent all these people to Spectre fleet, and then in the in the MTechO battle, which happened a couple days later, Spectre actually had two full fleets. It was just random people from all, all over the place. They filled two full fleets of, I think it was Tech One battleships, some random stuff. It was alright though. Um, so yeah, we got an even bigger blob in MTechO. Uh, I think I have the the battle report again at the end. Um, and we fought over MTechO. Um, we had it's a little. Don't want to bore you with the strategic stuff, but basically this is the constellation of MTGO, and it was already with Aegisoft, right? So you have to split like, all these nodes spawn, and you have to roam around in a constellation. Super fun gameplay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, in MTGO it actually worked, um, but that's a whole other story. Um, and also, we had we decided to position our main fleets, which uh, consisted of Test, PL, and C. Low set guys, um, you know, snuff and stuff. Horde and Vanguard Coalition, changed this up. Because last time I said try, and then I had some uh, Vanguard guys complain, oh, we're also part of Vanguard. So I said Vanguard. We had a position here, because from this system you can very easily uh, control four out of five, I'm better counting, five out of six systems in the constellation. And then obviously by math, you gen end up controlling most of the nodes. Um, and it worked out quite, quite well. Um, you guys or the CFC then tried to uh, break into the constellation wire JTEC G, and it was also where the biggest fight happened. I think you all jumped in and it was like 4,900 dudes in local. It was a pretty, pretty big fight. Uh, nice 10 percent tie dye. Lots of time to think about your decisions. <laughs> Um, and we had, uh, so we had all these main fleets sitting here and fighting in JTEC G. We had Guardians of the Galaxy, which was mainly Darkness, and all the others. There's a lot of alliances in that coalition. Um, we had them roam around, they had two Cerberus fleets, and we had them roam around the constellation, mainly these systems, and um, try to keep it clear of enemy entosis. And like I said, it's actually one of those fights uh, where I think the system worked out really well because you actually had, the, you know, we had fights spread over the whole constellation. We had one CFC Macario fleet engaged, Darkness, in one system. I think there was a Sildra who did that. Um, and then we had. Um, the main fight going on in JTEC G, and we had some skirmishes with CO2 and MTEC O and stuff like that, so it worked really out. Unfortunately, it takes a thousand people to make it work, so. Uh, or, or, or less. Um, so, yeah, that was that. And obviously, I forget, no. Obviously, um, something big happened after MTEC O because um, CO2 decided to leave the CFC, uh, which is funny because the evening before MTEC O, um, I got pulled into a team speak with GigX and the judge and um, they talked me, yeah, we're gonna leave the CFC tomorrow and I'm like, alright, cool, you still wanna fight? I'm like, yeah, we don't wanna look like backstabbers and I'm like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> so, instead of t telling them now and leaving and just calling it, you decide to make them fly over here, fight, and then leave afterwards? Alright, <laughs> that's, that's fine by me, I don't care, I get my fight. We got a huge fight. Um, it was, that's the budget bill, uh, obviously the list is way longer, but it doesn't fit on the slide. Uh, and as you can see, our blob was quite a little bit bigger this time. Instead of 1,100, we had 3,500 people, and the CFC had very, very much as well, 1,400. Um, so yeah, there's a pretty big engagement, um, but obviously the CFC was outnumbered pretty massively. And uh, after MTGO, in my opinion, the war was basically over in the sense of after we knew that, like, after CO2 switched sides and started fighting on our side, the, that's, like, on this fight, the CO2 is still counted on the CFC right, side, right? Like, if you put that over to us as well, it's just completely out of the balance. So there was no way that they could win any head-on fights in that sense when we have all these people together, right? So they did the right thing. Um, one more fight, though, I'll talk about that later. Um, we had the Battle of UQ9. It wasn't too significant because we mainly we fucked up again and we're late. Uh, so we lost the uh, IHOP timer, but we managed to reinforce the station, and then we also took that station a couple days later, which um, resulted in FCON and Razor who were staging in that system at a time uh, to evac and go towards Saranen, or try to. They tried um, through Bench and then over to Decline. They lost a lot of people in that one gate. They kept moving super through that gate, they jumped it, and they lost like five. They kept, like the next day, another Nix just jumped the gate. It was like, alright. Uh, so they died. Um, yeah, so basically at that point we held everything or we had everything under control except for Decline and Pure Blind. Um, Fate was kind of wrapped up as well almost. Uh, and then the, you can see this is when I started doing it on a train because the pictures are missing. <laughs> um, 
the grind of decline. There's not a lot to say about it. It was really, it was really like a lot of high, uh, you know, high ADM systems. And like I said, it was the strategic, the right, the strategically the right decision to not fight us head on because it doesn't make sense to fight somebody that outnumbers you three to one. Uh, so they just retreated, they were retreated, they lifted Saren at that point already, but they kind of um, didn't take any bigger fleets up into 0-0, they just annoyed us. I hate, I hate the motherfucking Inti fleets, dude. I swear to God. So they did it really, really, and it made it really annoying for us to grind decline as hard as possible, but we had the autism of Test and Horde combined, which is hard to beat. Uh, so they did most of grinding for us, props to that, if there's any tests over here, you guys uh, were fighting it because we can't stand in toes. Luckily we had you guys to do it for you, uh, for, for us, so that was great. And then um, the client was actually the, still done rather quickly, rather quickly, I think like two or three weeks or something, and then most of it. And then um, the Guardians of the Galaxy started moving in and you know putting up citadels and stuff. During that time, while the grind was going on, we had this awesome uh, staging system of, uh, of uh, CFC at that point. Um, and we decided to move into it. It was actually my decision afterwards. I kind of regret it because it was awful. But uh, yeah, we, we moved into the same system as them. Um, at that point, the Citadel patch was out, so we were just dropping Citadels in system, which allowed us to stage there very um, easily with them. And we had a lot of fights, and there was some where we really got smashed as well, like some fights. Hurricanes and Lostek, guys. <laughs> no. Don't fight Hurricanes and Lostek. You can't. Broken, you can't bomb them. Um, so yeah, we, we lost a lot of fights to Canes. We won some too. There was some really nice fights in there. Uh, I think after we moved out, like the day we moved out or something, the NC Dot decided to weld like 20 facts and some shit on, on one of your pauses. Right, well, well, that wasn't supposed to. What button did I press? Oh. Ah, uh, great, great. We're almost done as well. Let's do it. It was still fun, though. All right, so... Yeah, so we fought, we fought, and also you guys smashed some tissue titans on a gate with Snuff. Snuff decided to switch sides at some point uh, and kill some blues. It was fun. Um, so yeah, then, uh, but like after like one month or something, I actually don't know how long. You stay for, in, in Saren for a long time, but after like one month of us being there on top of you, uh, Goons made the call to um, move south to Delft and announce their new homelands. They put up a keep star, which for some reason lots of people expected them to show up and kill. I'm like, no, why? Not like we can kill it anyways. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, now you live in Delft and that worked out really well with the CFC. You have your you have your stuff. So the aftermath. Um, North has been freed of the CFC. Um, GSF, in the process of this, actually was, was funny because I talked to Les at FanFest um, and he, he was like, thank you, Killa. I'm like, yeah, I know. It's like, you just made GSF the, 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 the strongest alliance in the game because you had most of the remains of, uh, of the CFC merged into the goons and obviously now, like, if you look at a single alliance, Goon Swarm is by far the strongest alliance. They, uh, they have ridiculous numbers. They have a very strong uh, super captain, even though it's mixed. Shouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, the, the good parts are still 90. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No. So yeah, they, you, you got Delf, uh, so you see got Delf, they're living there, they're, they're having a good life. We saw that uh, thing on Reddit the other day with like the top five systems of Reddit. It's like 60,000 Reddit kills in 24 hours in one system somewhere in there. It's like, whew, some major Reddit going on. Uh, and yeah, now uh, what else is happening? Well, uh, so at the moment, NC and us are really chewing our T's off on NCO2, this campaign. I didn't make that call. I, don't, I didn't want that at all, but you know, now I'm in it, so I gotta, gotta help my bros in NC, obviously. Um, so we're fighting CO2, and there's some other stuff. There's not a lot going on right now, mainly stuff in the north and a little bit in the south. That's basically uh, what's going on. Um, I think overall, what would be it was a big war, a very big war in the, in the, uh, of our time in that sense, but uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't like the Halloween war where you had, like I said, it was actually only three major battles. So it's, a lot of people call it a very boring war, I kind of agree, but obviously when you, when you lead it, uh, it feels a lot more uh, active than it actually looks on the outside, because obviously there's a lot of work that doesn't actually involve gameplay, it's like paper pushing and you know, chatting with people and telling Lenny how many terrible ideas he had. Um, by the way, we didn't end up getting 2.5 trillionists, 
we, uh, we, we changed the payment, he paid us 100 bill a week, that's just PL. Um, and then he gave some extra money for a transition into, so we probably ended up making like two drill on the whole thing, uh, which is fine, and he SRP'd everything, so probably a little bit more. We made a lot of money on it, it's fine. Uh, it was good, yeah. That's basically <laughs> it. If you have any questions, feel free, you can ask about anything. I can probably give you an answer, it doesn't need to be war related, can, can be anything if you have any uh, questions or whatever, then feel free. Thanks. Super hum over. What up? Um, I have a question about the situation when uh, the war was over and um, the parties that were involved in the war were already fighting the Garissa's menace. And uh, um, yeah, we were trying to um, regain the pure blind area and we were trying to um, yeah, grind the ADMs and then go to the next system and blah blah blah. Um, was there actually plans to reassemble the MBC and fight us again, or was that just like, yeah, let the goons do their stuff? No, so I think at that point we left with PL already, and the, the day we left we decided that we were kind of done with it, because it really started grinding us down as well. Um, I know that happened in Pure Blind, but the people that were still running over there, they felt like it wasn't a big deal. And us, for our part, we just wanted to get out of the MBC at that point, because Having, like, PL doesn't like having half Eve Blue, obviously, you know, so I don't think, like, from my end, there was no plans. A lot of people were very concerned. I know Goblins cried at me, like, every single day. It's like, oh, this is serious, this is serious, you gotta come back. I'm like, no, I'm not coming back. So I, I'd say no, but there's probably other people telling it different. Yes. Then he also wanted to pay us again now to go south and fight you again, and we all told him no, so... <laughs> not gonna happen. Is it true that your, your personal wallet has been completely um, yes. confiscated? Yes. And how much of the, to, of the two trillion is that lady pays you got also confiscated? No, so none of the alliance money got taken at all. I don't know that, like, am I, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about this. Yes? Yeah? Okay, cool. Um, so, <laughs> no, none of the alliance wallet got taken. Um, I lost all my liquidus. It got taken basically everything that ever came from Lenny or anyone involved. And I won't all the money got taken, so yeah, I lost my liquid disk. But they don't touch the assets, so. Okay. Hi, so if you had to imagine a scenario where the MBC would fight goons again, uh, what would it be? I don't see a reason to. I don't think, um, like, in my, my personal opinion is. We did what, like, it was made. It was mainly for me. It was mainly a thing of showing that it's possible. And I don't have any, like, I personally have no concern with goons. I don't hate goons or whatever. It's, it's just uh, they are an alliance now, and I feel like they're in a good spot down there. They have their region. They have their space net. They're doing whatever they want to do. They're doing their content. I don't see anything happening that would make us form again. Maybe if they try to take half the map again, we'll see. But that's not really necessary nowadays, right? So, I actually have two questions as a latecomer to the war of the NBC. Um, where did the name actually arrive from? So there was a, there was a coalition of goons and test back in 2000. No, I mean the NBC name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, uh, so there was called the Honey Badger Coalition back then. And, um, oh, there was, there was test appeal, right? Yeah, test appeal. And um, now it was, um, well, because we got funded this time, because we all just did it for the money, uh, we called it Money Badger Coalition, it's basically the main reason. We did it when, when Tess joined officially, because then it was like Tess and PL again, and yeah, we got money. So, Money yeah. Badger. Um, so, one more question, like, why did you decide to camp a low sex station? Yeah, like I said, it doesn't really make sense, you can't camp low sex in that sense, but we felt if we would have moved out at the point where we, um, where, where, where we moved to Saren and they could have just taken most of the client back if they wanted to, so we kind of had to suppress them a little bit in, in Saren or do it as good as we could, obviously, like I said. They gained a lot of numbers back there because they f we fed them a couple of times, pretty bad. Um, Don't lose any more tea trees there, though. Huh? Don't lose any more tea trees down there. Yeah. Yeah, also fighting uh, hurricanes, and like I said, just don't fight hurricanes in Lossack, like close range. Just don't. You can do it with serves or whatever, but yeah. So, uh, no, um... Yeah, whatever. I forgot this. Right. 
Hi. Um, during the battle of Emtaco, how disappointed were you that the Imperium didn't commit a super capital? I didn't expect them to, like, I talked to Silvia about this yesterday, I don't know if CO2 had any plans for your super cap fleet, I honestly, like, nobody ever told me this is 100% honest. From my side, me and Vince never expected you to commit supers, we were ready for it, we had all our, we had all the NC supers and all the PL supers logged in 20 minutes before the timer even came out, so I didn't expect them to jump in at all, because it was ridiculous numbers, and it was not, logistically, they would have to move, it's not, not gonna happen with Phoebe, so I wasn't, I mean, yeah, of course, it would have been nice if they committed, because it probably would have died, but uh, I wasn't disappointed because I didn't expect it, personally. I don't know about CO2. All right, any more questions? What's your favorite cheese? My favorite cheese? Oh, yeah, because I said it doesn't have to be heat related. Um, <laughs> probably cheddar. All right, cool. Thanks for uh, listening.